All right, so within the basal ganglia, this is, and let me just tell you, tell you one more thing. You're gonna learn about the cerebellum in just a second. But movement basically occurs. Conscious voluntary movement occurs. It starts in that precentral gyrus of the frontal lobe in front of that central sulcus in the, let's call it the premotor area or the motor area. You have the decision. It's the, the idea behind the movement that you want to do. You want to grab that glass of water. You want to scratch your head. You want to put some food in your mouth. You have the idea. It's like the designer. That sends a message down to the basal ganglia, which we'll talk about now. One of the things I said about the basal ganglia is it, it's said to start and stop movement, initiate and terminate movement at the proper times. And that's partly the indirect and direct portion, which is good to know. The basal ganglia is like the architect. The, the frontal cortex, or the, 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 the premotor cortex, says, I want to do this. And make some basic big decisions about it, like it's going to be a builder. I just have this idea that I want to grab that glass of water. should probably use my hand for that, not my foot. Oh, basal ganglia, I'll leave the, the specifics of what's going to happen to you. Now, the basal ganglia uh, helps to decide what muscles should be stimulated and which ones should be inhibited. Uh, for example, if you're bringing something to your mouth, you're probably going to stimulate your flexors and simultaneously inhibit your extensors. And it, kind of, and it comes up with a plan and then sends it back to the cortex. And then the cortex executes it, the decision. Now the cerebellum, which you're gonna learn about, is the kind of the foreman that's on the construction site. So you had the designer, you had the architect, you had the idea maker and the architect, and then the, the cerebellum is the one that makes sure it's executed fine. So it makes sure that you, when you take that piece of food to your mouth, you don't end up here, uh, that you don't, uh, that, that it's a smooth coordinated movement. Okay, so that's kind of how this all works together. Now what I want to do here is the direct and indirect pathway of the basal ganglia as best as I can. So what we have is the cortex. It's referring to the cerebral cortex, the premotor cortex. Here you see the striatum. We just saw that a second ago. That's a combination of the caudate nucleus and the putamen. Here we have the globus pallidus. Remember there was a couple different portions of this. You have the globus pallidus internus, or in the internal or the medial portion, and you have the globus pallidus external or the lateral portion. We also talked about the substantia nigra briefly and saw where that was. And then we didn't talk about this, but it makes sense. The subthalamic, subthalamus, the thalamus, below the thalamus nuclei. So it's, a, and you know what a nuclei is, just a collection of cell bodies. And then here's the thalamus. So here's the direct and indirect pathways. Oh, and we have some color-coded uh, neurotransmitters. Glutamate in red, stimulatory, GABA in blue, inhibitory, dopamine, in this case, stimulatory in green, and substance P, I'm not gonna talk about, but it's on here, inhibitory uh, in orange. Okay, the idea comes from the cortex. It sends that idea down to the striatum, and it stimulates it. it stimulates the striatum via glutamate. Now, the striatum 